I'm not sure, but it came from over there, turned to the east, and then flew over the city. It dropped the bomb. The city was destroyed by just one bomb. The Americans used us as guinea pigs. That's what happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I still feel guilty sometimes about all of those people who died. When the image of those helpless people comes back to my mind, crying for help, saying, Give me water, give me water. How much they suffered. When we think about that, we survivors feel very guilty. seen you for a long time. That's true. How are you? Every day, I come here to work. Is that so? Since we haven't seen each other for a long time, I just wondered how you were doing. Since I settled here, everything goes well. I'm glad to find you well. May I bother you for a minute? Come on in. How neat it is. Come on in. Thank you. I'm sorry I haven't seen you for a long time. I wish I could visit you, but it's impossible because of my work and other things. It's hard, isn't it? I have to eat, and since it's hot these days, I have to rest. But it's good that you can work. Since I'm old, that's not easy. August 6 is coming soon, the day of the bomb. Are you going to the park to pray this year too? Yes, I am. Good. Well, we must not forget it. As long as I am alive, as long as my legs and my eyes are fine, I'll go and pray for everyone who died. By the way, I have something to tell you. I have decided to go to New York at the beginning of June for three weeks. I have decided to visit the office called the United Nations with a group of people.
to tell what life is like for survivors. About 60 people are going from Hiroshima. Some 1,500 people are going from all over the country. I used to go to many places when I was young, before the bomb was dropped. I used to want to visit this place and that place, but now I'd prefer to lie in bed. You shouldn't worry. You will live a long time. Even if I live long, I have no pleasure and I have no sorrow because I have no children. I'm only waiting to die. No, no, come on. I am 80 and something, 86 or 7. I will be 87 soon. But someone who is turning 90 is still alive. At that age, you don't want to go out to work. But you are a civil servant of Hiroshima City. You know that. <laughs> Maybe. But it's not easy to go out and sweep. Follow me. The hypo center where the bomb exploded is over here. The names of all the Hiroshima victims are inscribed in this tomb.
On August 6th, when my mother was 11, she was playing marbles with her friends. A flash came, and when she became conscious again, all her friends around her had disappeared. She ran away, and by chance met her father by the river. He carried her on his back and they swam up the river. The river was full of floating bodies, and they had to make their way through those bodies. My mother and her father were the only people who survived in that area. It was really like that. That is what she told me. Since nothing has happened to me so far, I feel like an ordinary person. But I cannot help thinking that there is always a possibility, 1% or X%. percent. It's frightening, isn't it? The Ministry of Welfare says that the fact that our parents are hibaksha has no effect on us. But my mother is always worrying whenever I am sick, worrying whether it's because she is hibaksha. It's very hard to see my parents tormented this way. And when I see that, I really think that such a thing should never happen again. When I bring children into the world, they will be called third-generation hibaksha. And what if any after-effects should skip a generation? My cousin was just about to get married. She had already bought furniture and other household appliances. And then someone found out that she was a second-generation Hibaksha. The man that she was going to marry was not from Hiroshima and he cancelled the engagement. And my cousin tried to commit suicide. When I heard this story, I was shocked. I was really shocked. Tomorrow that may happen to us. No, I don't think so. But if someone says he can't marry me because I'm a second-generation Hibaksha, or if his parents don't allow him to marry me because of that, it can't be helped. It's an undeniable fact that I am second-generation Hibaksha. It hasn't happened to me yet. But if someone said such a thing to me, I'd have to say, I understand. But then I would feel very sad. Why do we have to be tormented by such a thing? It's because our parents are hibaksha. Other people don't have any idea how we suffer from that. And that's understandable. But still, I have to suffer for something I can't even understand. And that makes me angry. Other people are not tormented by such a thing. It's not my fault. And it's not my mother's fault either. Here is what I think. By August 1945, Japan was almost completely stripped of weapons. We had only bamboo spears left to fight with. So, if the Americans had landed in Japan, they might have had some casualties, but it was hardly necessary to drop an atomic bomb. We were used as guinea pigs. That's what happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The Americans experimented with us.
haven't seen you for a while. How are you these days? Getting worse. You can still stand up, can't you? No. You can't anymore. I get dizzy. I can't even sit up or lie on my side. I just lie on my back, facing the ceiling. You were able to sit up last time. Yes, I could do that before. You can move your hand, can't you? Yes, that is the only thing I can move. If at least you could see. My eyes don't work, my legs don't move. Once in a while, I can't help wondering what I live for. I am ashamed to think of such a thing, though. I must think that I am lucky to be alive. But since the Americans did such a cruel thing to me, I cannot help sometimes thinking like that. They don't consider us human. No. I don't like to think of it because it only makes me feel sad. I too was afraid of remembering those things. I kept silent about being a hibakusha. I can understand. I cannot help crying whenever I think about it. Many airplanes fly over this hospital. It sounds like an air raid and it frightens me. I wonder why the governor lets planes fly over here. It is really frightening to hear the terrible noise of those airplanes. Especially since jet planes took over. I can't help remembering the B-29s. The sound of an airplane reminds us of August 6th. The day that changed our lives. I understand your life is hard, but we must try to live through it anyway. Yes. I can't think of anything else to say, but I suppose it is important to do the best we can to keep alive. When I go to New York, I will tell everybody that there are people here like yourself. Yes, please tell them. I am leaving now. Please take care. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Take care of yourself. Of course, we have been occupied by the Americans, and we don't feel too easy about that. During the war in Vietnam, the airplanes took off from here, and the nuclear-capable marine unit used to go from here, too. You see those airplanes over there? They are 4M Skyhawks. They can carry nuclear weapons. There are about 50 planes here that can carry nuclear weapons. As many as that? You might think that the space is not important, but in fact it is very dangerous.
Why don't we sit here? It's wet. That's okay. Why don't we have lunch? What a strange chopstick. I'm going to New York soon. My colleagues gave me a farewell party on the 24th. Where? At the labor union hall. Everyone who is going to New York is going with a certain message. They've been working at it very hard. I am the only one who doesn't seem to have as much to say. Is Mr. Kobayakawa going? Yes, he is. He has a good message to carry, too. The fact that I am second-generation Hibakusha is all that I have to say. Your role is very important. All the more reason I have to emphasize the fact that I am second-generation. You still want to go? At first, I refused for some minor reasons. But after I talked to Mr. Yamashita and Mr. Yamada, I realized that I was only finding excuses. For someone who is second-generation Hibaksha like me, I think that it is important that I go, although I'm not sure I would call it a mission. America, give us our visas. Eliminate nuclear weapons. No nuclear weapons on Japanese soil. Our representatives are still waiting for them at the gate. In the middle of the negotiations, the Americans demand to go to lunch just at 12 noon. <laughs> what a ridiculous excuse not to see us. How do you do? When the bomb was dropped, I was working about 1.6 kilometers from the hypocenter near Fujimicho. I was then on the work committee to clear away buildings for fire paths. The flash of the bomb destroyed my eyesight.
And as I was later told, I was lying under the debris of the collapsed building for two days, unconscious. I have no recollection of this. Since then, for over 30 years, I have suffered from more than five kinds of illnesses, including abdominal troubles and a reduction of white blood cells. Even so, I am lucky to be alive today, though I have been in and out of the hospital for the last 37 years. It is beyond anybody's imagination how hard life has been for the Yibaksha, more than 400,000 of us. And even today, my life is full of rage and pain. It is easy to say, we will never repeat this mistake. May you rest in peace. But in fact, as long as there is risk of such a war, we cannot rest in peace. This is why I am going to the United Nations. Even though I need a cane to walk, and I am virtually blind. Because of Reagan's stupid policies, I am going to appeal to the world for the complete elimination of nuclear weapons and to tell the people all over the world and the young generation not to let the sufferings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki be repeated. Thank you very much. I am Mr. Murata from Hiroshima. I was five years old when the bomb was dropped. I was 1.8 kilometers from the hypocenter, and all my family were victims of the A-bomb. I have so much to say, but I will speak briefly. Until recently, I have been hiding the fact that I was Hibaksha. I decided to speak because Reagan started talking about limited nuclear war. The suffering that we survivors have had. Should not be experienced by any people ever again. That's why I decided to speak. This is a banner my fellow union members made for me. The heart of Hiroshima, all over the world. It is in this spirit that we are going to the United Nations. This building, too, must be abandoned. I see some people. And that building? With a single atomic bomb, the city of Hiroshima turned into what you see in this picture, a ruined city. This picture shows Yukibashi Bridge, close to where I was at the moment the bomb was dropped. This is another picture of someone who died instantly. 
Her face was burned. The nose and eyes are gone. This is a back. This is only one person who died because of the atomic bomb. There were 100,000 in Hiroshima and about 80,000 in Nagasaki. I talked to many people in the class, and nobody has even heard of Hiroshima. You, children, I would like children all over the world who wish for peace to join hands and build a world where another war will never happen again. We have come from the four corners of the earth upon our native land because we have faced a problem so great which was prophesized and known to the Hopi ever since he came upon this continent. As a religious leader in Hopi land, I hope to bring this message to them who are assembling here in the United Nations. Our prayers always said, all of us, brothers and sisters, remember our Mother Earth who is in pain. And let us hear her, pray for her, and protect her. Let us put aside all destructive weapons. Let us put aside the gourd full of ashes, never to use it anywhere again upon any people, any living things upon this earth. Let us pray for all our children and coming generations, so that we can all have a long and happy life and never destroy our Mother Earth. A litany of names of children who have been killed in war. From Nagasaki and Hiroshima to Miki Nagoya, we will remember. Sadako Suzuki, we will remember. Yasuyo and her brother, we will remember. Children of the Holocaust, Hannes Hakenberg. We will remember. Eva Pikova, we will remember. Children of El Salvador, Jose Mendez, we will remember. Victoria Martinez, we will remember. Palestinian children, Mohammed Abdella, we will remember. Sana Omar Nabusi, we will remember. And for the nameless others, we will remember.
I was born in 1940, so I was five years old at that time. I was outside playing soldiers. It was 8.15 in the morning. Inside the house was my older sister. The others were either at school or working with the cleanup committee. The bomb was dropped. Although I was outside, I was not exposed to the flash, so I didn't get burned much. So I don't have many keloid scars. I was 1.8 kilometers from the dome where the bomb was dropped. In a way, it was a miracle that I survived. It is said that almost everybody within two kilometers was killed instantly. Although I didn't get exposed to the direct flash, I was blown three meters away by the shock. When I became conscious again, I found myself in someone else's house. It was totally dark and it frightened a little boy like me. So neighbors evacuating from the area took me out of the house. I went back to my house. Our two-story wooden house had collapsed from the shock. And I saw my oldest sister under the debris, crying, help me. I could see her. Since I could see her, I tried everything I could to rescue her. Digging her out. But since I was a little boy, I couldn't do it. Meanwhile, my nine-year-old sister came back. She was in elementary school. The left side of her body was severely burned. The left side of the body was gone. Her skin was hanging. It wasn't a recognizable body that she had anymore. Together we tried to get my oldest sister out. But even together, we couldn't do it. In the meantime, the fire reached our house. Our neighbors came and forced us to leave. My sister, who was under the house, thought she couldn't be rescued, so she said to our neighbor, Auntie, please take Tariko and Setsuko away from here. Auntie, please take Tariko and Setsuko away from here. 
So she grabbed us by the hand and took us away, running, although we wanted to stay. The sister who ran away with me died September 10th. Then, an American organization called ABCC was established to investigate the after effects of the atomic bomb on those who survived. Even when we were studying at school, American soldiers came by jeep and picked us up saying, Hey you, hey you. Hey you. And took us to the ABCC, Atomic Bomb Casualty Commission. Not that they ever treated us. They never gave us treatment. However sick a child was, they never treated him. They only studied us. A piece of candy was all they gave us when we were leaving. That Americans are not made aware of this fact is terrible. Americans must reflect seriously upon the fact they dropped the nuclear bomb on human beings for the first time in history. Besides, they dropped it on civilians and children. I think this is an indelible stain on the history of mankind. It was Truman's mistake. That the American government keeps silent about this fact and doesn't educate the American people about it is a great dishonor for Americans. They must know it. It's no good unless Americans themselves come to understand the fact and realize that they should never again be the initiator. Americans and Russians, they own 95% of the total nuclear weapons in the world. People like Reagan say it would be all right if there's a limited nuclear war. We and Russians would not receive any damage. They are saying that it would be okay as long as nuclear war is limited to Europe or Asia. That is egoist. Anywhere, whether it's Europe or Africa, I believe as an atomic bomb survivor that this should never happen again. That is why I decided to speak. Although it is a painful memory, I force myself to remember my own experience because I'd like people to understand there should be no more Hiroshima, no more Nagasaki. It was not until this February that I decided to speak. I have been involved in union activities and peace activities, but I was just unable to say that I myself was a hibakusha. I am 
being ashamed of myself. But now, I cannot be quiet anymore. If so, another bomb will be dropped. A nuclear war will happen. We have come to a time when every survivor must speak out. There are many survivors in this group who came with me this time. And everybody feels the same way. Nobody is happy about speaking of their experience because they cannot do so without tears and pain. But they have decided to come here. Although they feel great anguish, they feel they must speak out. They try to find every occasion to talk to people. I'd really like to let Reagan know about this. If I had a chance, I'd like to talk to him face to face. Then he couldn't make such a ridiculous statement. It is ridiculous for him to say dropping an atomic bomb is all right as long as it is not on his own country. We are all human beings alike. Hello, everybody. At 8.15 in the morning, the 6th of August, 1945, I became one of the victims of the first atomic attack in the history of the world. I am here to make an appeal for the total elimination of nuclear weapons. No more war, peace, peace. 